thought I would show you a Japanese deck of mine, um, uh, sort of inspired by a small conversation I had with um, Sacred Space Japan, um, because we talked about the Mama Nimiyoki deck, uh, which is also a Japanese deck, and um, so I felt, okay, I'll have to, to show you some more Japanese decks. Um, and this one that you can see on the table here is the Terakoso Ban Hiko Taro. Now, I don't speak Japanese and I don't read Japanese, but this is how I think it's pronounced. Um, I'll write the uh, exact English interpretation of the Japanese name of the title of this deck underneath the, uh, the video here. Um, so that you can find it if you feel like it. Um, it's made by Mondo Oki and also another person called Unasaka. Um, yeah, and uh, so let's have a look at this uh, this box which it came in, um, which is quite nice, isn't it? Um, it's beautiful. Um, So, in the box, we have, oh, oh dear. we have um, the cards, and we have a book. Oh, look at those colours. It's such candy overload. I love it. Um, now, in here, the, well, the cards as well as, and I took them out, as you can tell, um, and it's, you know, it's really, it's just so Japanese, you know, that you can actually, it's, it's been so well um, protected from any sort of damage, um, gorgeous packing, uh, a well thought through packing, of course, and a huge poster here with <laughs> all kinds of um, divinatory meanings in Japanese on every single card um, and uh, and here we have the book which is of course in Japanese as well um, and uh, you read from the back rather <laughs> this is the front of course in Japan sorry um, gorgeous you know, and oh, just have a look at, at the front here. Can you tell how it's sort of shimmering and sort of style of nouveau with um, some Greek mythological inspiration and and some modern inspiration as well. Ah, oh, beautiful. And the book, um, oh, look at that. The book is in Japanese and has um, meanings here for all the major arcana and arcana cards. And, oh, yeah. So, I'm back. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, and um, and we have uh, meanings for all the uh, major arcanas as well, um, as you can tell. So, um, and then all kinds of exciting spreads. We have Tree of Life here, and I saw a Celtic cross as well somewhere. So beautiful, gorgeous book. Of course, I mean it's Japanese. Oh, and we have different playing cards, Marseille decks, and oh wow! So let me show you the deck. Here are the cards. They're reversible. Um, and they have 
have a mermaid in the back with a lot of uh, floral ornamentation and looks like actually the uh, the star card, isn't it, in one of um, Kaplan's um, decks. Don't remember which one, but um, mm. so let's zoom in and I'll show you the. Uh, Major Arcana. <laughs> the punk hair and uh, wings on his feet. Hermes. Magician. Wow. High priestess. You can tell that there is a mixture of Japanese hair ornamentation here, hairstyle and Greek mythology, Art Nouveau, just really cool. Empress, Emperor. Many of the figures in the cast look quite androgynous, which I, I like. I appreciate it. <laughs> Elephant. Lovers. Only two people. Jerry. Wow. She or he is really on the move. <laughs> Strength is number eight in this deck. Here we have the gorgeous, uh, is it the Moiras? Um, weaving and cutting the threads of life. And as a knitter, I really dig this card. <laughs> as the Wheel of Fortune. Justice is then 11 in this deck. Hmm. The moon on a stick. Oh, the hermit, I mean. Oh, the hermit. I just jumped something, didn't I? Yeah. So the hermit is, of course, not 12, but 9. Um, beautiful. Like holding the moon in, in the hand. And having, like, sitting in the tree. Wow. Man. And as always, I like to just have a look at it reversed for a moment. Death. <laughs> Temperance. Halo, the devil. Wow, it's a sassy devil. The Harlequin, the tower. Also, again, you see references to a great, great temple. Um, the star. Judgment. I mean, I'm sure that many of those uh, figures actually do represent the figures from Greek mythology. I am just not very well um, knowledged when it comes to those things. So, but if you have any comments, if you can tell me anything about those figures and who they might be in Greek mythology, please do not hesitate. To write something below the world. And we see the full 
here, the false hair compared to this hair. Hmm. <laughs> so, those were the majors. And let's go for should we do some ones? Here are the quilts. I'm just gonna show you all the quilts at one time. Moon here in her hair and Pegasus, maybe. And wow, the knights in this deck are quite um, female looking and, and very, uh, very powerful. possible. I prefer to see them all together at one time. Just sort of see the flow of how they evolve. Um, yeah, waves and curly stuff and uh, and look, here we have a Knight of Cup which is sort of merman <laughs> and they all wear sort of helmets and again Crescent Moon and the lo how what is it called? Lorette? L Lorette? Um, leads for the king, on a sort of crown, or oh, sort of a uh, throne, or a bench or something. Ah, oh, look, he's really riding a wave, this page of cups. Love his tail. And so here we have all the cups. All of them turning upwards. And having apparently as the sign that looks like, with the triangle, that looks like uh, the sign for the symbol of fire. I don't know if that is on purpose, or rather if that is meant that way. <laughs> I wonder what this uh, queen is doing. Oh, look, a king tower. Cool, huh? And this king of sorts. All the leaves. I think many of the kings have a lot of leaves around them. Um, yeah. So the knights are apparently like fable, fable creatures or animals. Um, might be a reference to to um, Minkiade decks, or yeah, where you also have knights as kentaurs, right? Or another sort of person mixed with animal body type of figure. Hmm. I mean, definitely not um, Marseille style. Boobs and definitely, um, well, I 
haven't seen this combination before, I think. Um, But if you like really like simple images, then I think this is, and this is not meant in a bad way, like a, a critique, it's, it's meant in a positive way, the black and white, um, or rather the ivory colour, because um, it is ivory, but I don't think my camera is picking it up. It's black and ivory, and uh, beautiful ivory colour, definitely not white, plain white. So if you like the simplicity, then... This deck is really worth looking for. So let's um, let's have a look at the last suit. Yeah, see again all the leaves here, some leaves here and here as well actually in the pentacles uh, suit. Again, a female-looking knight on a fable um, creature, a unicorn this time. Ah, this King of Pentacles is one of my favourite courts in this deck with the wind in his hair. It just looks like the wings actually, he's got wings on his shoulders. Isn't that just cool? And this bed or sofa of hers, you can just imagine how she lies there and just has a good time. <laughs> Okay, now we have some quite alternative um, <laughs> arrangements going on. Um, also this one, I haven't seen before, I think. I uh, haven't seen that one either. Um, but that's, that's funny. Um, and as I said, I haven't used the deck really that much. Um, I use some of the majors, but not really the pips, so I don't know what it's like to read with them and how I'll and how I do with it or don't. <laughs> I haven't etched them or anything. I just uh, actually I do have a beige. Um, I have a beige pen. Um, Tombo? Is it Tombo? Uh, I think my kids stole it, to be honest. Um, yeah, it's gone. Hmm. simplistic in a way and yet not at all because you have fable animals and strange movements and beautiful people in beautiful clothing I mean uh, let's have a look this King of Cups. And what have we got here? The Chariot. Wow. Some cups. Gorgeous deck. I love it. I have to use it. I have to leave it on the table and, um, and use it. <laughs> That's what it's there for, isn't it? So, um, yeah, well, thank you for watching and hope that you feel inspired to maybe get this deck. And um, thanks for watching. Ciao.